Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about differentiation by the first principle. Now, this is the foundation of calculus. Uh, if you want to describe calculus in one word, it is all about gradient. And uh, a complete calculus, I would say, is based on this simple principle called differentiation by first principle. So if you are a calculus student, you should know how to differentiate by the first principle. Okay. Now, in calculus, we always talk about gradient. Okay. When we are saying gradient or derivative, uh, what we mean is we're talking about the gradient of the tangent at a point. Now, what do I mean? Now, this is a curve. I don't know the equation of the curve. It is say I'll generalize it as y is equal to fx. Okay. So I've plotted four points. This is point A, B, C, D. Now I've drawn a tangent at A. Now L is line L is the tangent at point A. Line B is a tangent at point B. A tangent you should know is a line which just touches. Uh, through one point. So this is a tangent at A, B, C, and D. Now, if you know gradient, when you're talking about gradient, it is the rate of change, a rate of change of y with respect to x. That means, what's the change in y for the change in x? That's what we talk about gradient. And you should also know that when you're talking about gradient, you're looking from left to right. Now, if you look at this line from left to right, it's going up. So we see that the gradient is positive. Here, by looking at this from left to right, it's going down, sloping down. So we say the gradient is zero. Here, if you look at this point, this is a very crucial point, a very important point, a critical point. This year, the gradient is zero year. Okay, it is neither sloping up or down, so the gradient is zero. And here at this point, I think by now you know it's agreeing this positive. So that's what I've written. Okay, so let me scroll down. Okay, so that's what I've written. In L1, the gradient is positive, L2 negative, L3 0. So and L this is negative. Okay. Now in calculus we want to find we are interested in finding the gradient of the line at that point. When I say gradient, it means the gradient of the tangent at that point. Okay. I'm just building this up. So now, let us take one example. This is a general form. This is a curve. I don't know the equation of the curve. It is y is equal to fx. So I'm taking, say, two points a and b. The x value is x, and here b is x plus h. h stands for a small increment in x. So here B is say H away from X value. This is general. We are generalizing. So if this is X, the corresponding Y value is F of X. Uh, some of you may ha have seen this as, uh, I'll scroll this down a little. You may learn, you may have learned this as X1 and Y1, if, sorry, X, X1 and X2. If this is X1, this is X2. So the corresponding value is y1 and y2, okay? But I'm going to use a different notation uh, with a reason. I'll tell you later. So if this is, say, x, the, uh, the x value of b is x plus h, okay? Or in other words, b is h away from x horizontally, okay? And so the corresponding value of y is f of x, and the corresponding value of b is y value of b is f of x plus h. Okay, or in other words, this is y2 and this is y1. So you know the definition of gradient is rise over run, or the gradient is change in y over change in x. So let us take the, this is what you may be knowing, gradient is change in y over change in x, which is rise over run. This is y2 minus, this is the change in y, which is rise. And change in x is the run, which is x2 minus x1. Okay. Now, instead of this, same thing, 
instead of writing y2 minus 1, y2 minus y1, can I write gradient m is f of x plus h minus f of x over x2 is x plus, I'll show it again. So this is your x, x1, this is your x2. So in place of x2, I can write x plus h. In place of x1, I can write x. So simple, I'm just substituted what is y2, this is y2, this is y1, this is x2, this is x1. So if I open the bracket, what will happen? This will, this x, this x and this x will get cancelled. So you can say m would be f of x plus h minus f of x minus h. Okay, this is nothing fancy yet. Okay, now I want you to think in a logical way. Put on your thinking cap and read this, what have I said here. My statement is, this is, calculus is all about intuition, okay? If you uh, remember formulas, you're never going to enjoy calculus. So what does it say? What would happen to the value of h, talking about this, as b comes closer and closer to a, or to put that same thing in a different way, what would happen as point B and A are not two different points, but become the same point? That means, we are saying what, think about, let us go back to the graph. Okay, now what I'm saying is, what would happen to H, the value of H, as B comes closer and closer and closer to the value, to A? Okay, think about it. Okay, I think you should be knowing the answer. If you're thinking, this is what you should be thinking. Yes, as B approaches A and are very, very close to each other. Okay, they, means this is almost, they're almost the same point. But they're different, but they are the same. Okay, that's uh, the intuition behind uh, this principle. So, yes, as B approaches A, and are very, very, very close to each other, the value of h approaches zero. Let me go back to the graph and what, that's what I'm saying. If this h, I told you in the beginning, that's a small increment in h, sorry, in x. x plus h is x plus something. You add something to x, you get x plus h. So as this point comes closer and closer and closer on the curve, closer to B, so closer to A, this value of H would approach zero. It's almost zero. Okay. So that's the intuition. So that's what I've written. Approach is zero, which is mathematically written as this. Now this is, I haven't talked about limits, but lim this is a, way, a mathematical way of writing it. Okay. So this is how you write. When the limit h approaches zero. Now h is not zero. Okay. This is only approaching zero. So that's one thing that you have to wrestle with. That uh, h is not zero, but almost zero. In practical sense, practical sense, it's zero. But in theoretically, it is not zero. Okay. So or technically, it is not zero. In practical sense, it is zero. Okay. So what will happen? So I've written the same thing again. This is an argument, okay? And that's why maths, I love argument and I love maths. So when H, when the limit, this is how you read it, when the limit H approaches zero and A and B are almost the same points, what can you say about line AB? So this is a crucial point. Okay, again we are uh, developing the argument. Uh, let us say again. A and B are almost the same point. There's, you can say B is almost here. Okay? I'm not plotting it. And we are saying if B comes closer and closer to A, H will become zero. So what will happen to this line? How would this line look like? That's the question. Okay, so let me sh show you. I'll highlight this. I can drag it. Okay? So this line will become, let me, now if 
now we are saying is A and B are the same points. So if A and B are the same points, B from here has come here. So this line AB would suddenly become the tangent at that point. Okay. So so that's what I have written here. So let me write scroll down. So yes, line AB would become the line would become a line just passing through A. Or in other words, the line AB would become the tangent passing through point A. So this is all about intuition. Uh, so if you can understand logic, this is what we are talking about. So now coming back to the formula of gradient, this was the gradient that we proved or we, we talked about M in this form. So we can say this was the gradient of line AB. So what has the what change has happened now? This gradient of line AB has become now the gradient of the tangent at point A. So now we can say now this is the formula of gradient. So we can now say that the gradient of the tangent at A can be defined by this definition. This is called the basic definition of De differentiation. Now, what is dy? Now, dy, and when you, when students look at dy and dx, they, they find it crazy. But in fact, they are numbers. This is a infinitesimally small change in y, okay. and this is the infinitesimally small change in x. Let me go back. So, what I'm what am I talking about? A and b are almost together. That means the change in y is almost an infinitesimally small change in y, and the change in x can be described as an infinitesimally small change in x. That's nothing but dy by dx. Okay, so we say okay, dy is a very, 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 very. You can uh, give any number of very or infinite infinitesimally small change in y and dx is the infinitesimally small change in x is this is how you write in mathematics uh, in maths when you learn calculus in year 13 you'll understand limits i'm not going into limits so limits itself is a big topic so we can say the limit when h is approaching zero that dy by dx is the gradient of the tangent at that point okay this is the crucial word that this formula is nothing but gives you the gradient at A of the given function. Okay, so hopefully this video has been helpful. In the next video, I'll prove this. I'll use this to prove uh, some basic differentiation. See you in the next video.